Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. By the Middle Permian approximately 280 million years ago, the once dominant predatory Sphenacodontids had begun to decline. Large sail-backed carnivores such as Dimetrodon and relatives, while formerly successful, now had to compete with the new and more derived synapsid lineage, the Therapsids. The most basal of these animals were still hypercarnivores, much like their basal Sphenacodontid cousins, although later forms were highly diverse and included purely herbivorous and omnivorous forms. Features uniting Therapsids include the presence of larger temporal fenestrae, indicating the development of more powerful jaw muscles. This paired well with the development of more mammal-like tooth structures, which in ancestral therapsids include snipping incisors, prominent blade-like canines, and slicing molars. In addition, the limbs were held more directly beneath the body without being fully erect, while the feet were more symmetrical, giving these animals a more mammal-like gait when walking and running. Other aspects of early therapsid physiology are more controversial. Multiple studies have come to different conclusions regarding the metabolisms and respiratory abilities of these animals being regarded as either fully endothermic or possessing slower, more reptile-like metabolic rates. The truth probably lies somewhere in between, with therapids perhaps having mesothermic metabolisms, as has been proposed for some non-avian dinosaurs. Also, evidence for the presence of hairy coats among Permian synaptids as a whole is quite poor, although some South African coprolites do indicate that at least some therapids were partially furry. Regardless, it would be these traits that would enable this lineage to thrive and diversify rapidly during the second half of the Permian, eventually producing true mammals by the late Triassic. The most basal known therapsid is the genus Raranimus, from the middle Permian of China circa 272 million years ago. The holotype specimen consists of a single partial skull comprising only the tip of the snout, although the teeth are well preserved enough to show this was a modestly sized carnivore. Raranimus lived only a million years after a significant faunal turnover known as Olson's extinction, which took place about 273 million years ago, and led to the rapid decline of the basal synapsids, such as the Sphenacodontids and Cassisaurs. The causes of this event are not well understood, although severe climatic changes almost certainly played a part. In the aftermath of this extinction, the previously rare therapsids were catapulted into the limelight. Aside from Roranimus, the most basal clade within this lineage were the Biarmosuchians. These were generally modestly sized, lightly built carnivores that were in many ways transitional forms between basal synapsids and the later, more mammal-like therapsids. One of the oldest members of the group was the genus Biarmosuchus itself, which was native to Russia about 267 million years ago. About the size of a large dog, measuring up to 2 meters or 6 feet 6 inches long, this carnivorous animal possessed prominent canines and relatively elongated limbs, suggesting that it was an agile hunter. Unlike later members of the clade, the skull lacked any bony ornamentation, and in many respects resembled those of earlier Sphenacodontids. The later Bernetimorphs were quite bizarre in appearance, with skulls covered in nodules and crests, which were probably utilised in mating displays or as species recognition. Biarmosuchians were not particularly common animals, and fulfilled an ecological role somewhat like that of modern canids or larger mustelids, hunting smaller synapsids and sauropsids. They persisted until the very end of the Permian, inhabiting a Pangaean distribution until they perished during the severe extinction event at the end of the period. Following on from the Biarmosuchians, we come to a more diverse and commonplace clade of therapsids, the Dinocephalians. With a very appropriate name meaning terrible heads, these odd animals were still relatively basal, retaining several ancestral synapsid features, such as a lack of a secondary palate in the mouth and a small dentary. However, typical of therapsids, Dinocephalians possessed semi-erect limbs and differentiated teeth, which enabled them to diversify out into a range of carnivorous, omnivorous, and herbivorous forms. However, ancestral forms were almost certainly predatory, with a perfect example of this trend represented by the Antiosaurids. Developing from relatively modest species such as the five-foot-long Archaeocyodon, members of this family would go on to produce some of the largest carnivorous animals of the entire Permian. The genus Titanophoenus, 
whose ridiculously over-the-top name means Titanic Murderer, measured at least 4 metres or 13 feet long, and was a robust hunter with huge blade-like canines. With semi-erect limbs, Titanophoanus would have walked in a manner similar to that of the high walk of modern crocodilians, enabling it to effectively ambush prey after a short chase. Compared to later therapsid predators, the tail was long and heavy, while the skull was modestly reinforced, suggesting that this animal may have engaged in head-pushing behaviour with rivals. An even more massive relative dwelt in what is now South Africa between 266 and 260 million years ago. This was Anteosaurus, potentially the largest carnivorous non-mammalian synapsid to ever live. Measuring at least 5 metres or 16 feet long and weighing about a ton, paleontologists once surmised that Anteosaurus hunted rather like crocodiles pulling land animals into the water. In particular, scientists pointed to the animal's strong tail and supposedly weak, sprawling limbs as proof of this lifestyle. But in 2021, new examinations of its brain suggested that it was largely terrestrial, with highly advanced senses of vision, balance and coordination. It was also surprisingly fast over short distances, much like modern bears and would have been able to outrun competitors and prey alike thanks to its advanced adaptations. Its body was well suited to projecting itself forward, both in hunting and evidently in headbutting due to the reinforced nature of the skull. As a result, Anteosaurus was able to prey on almost all contemporary animals, with particular targets being its large herbivorous dinocephalian cousins. Speaking of which, Another early dinocephalian family shifted into a more massive herbivore niche after the decline of the basal cassisaurs during the Middle Permian. These were the distinctive Estomenosuchids, which so far are known exclusively from the Perm region of Russia. Although three genera have been described, only the genus Estomenosuchus itself is particularly well preserved. This was a large, bulky animal that measured up to 3 metres or 10 feet long, and possessed a massive, fearsome skull equipped with bony horns superficially similar to the antlers of a moose. The broad body suggests a mostly herbivorous diet, although the relatively unspecialised teeth have led to suggestions that Estomenosuchus may have been an omnivore. Interestingly, skin impressions associated with the genus are known, which shows smooth, glandular skin lacking in hair or scales, similar to that of a modern hippo or in some species of wild pig. The reign of Estomenosuchids was quite short-lived, with the group dying out and being replaced by the more specialised Tapinocephalids by about 265 million years ago. These were also dinocephalians, but were almost entirely herbivorous in nature, with simple peg-like teeth and high shoulders indicative of a browsing ecological niche. Their bodies were massive, with broad abdomens containing extensive guts for digesting vegetation while the skulls were often quite small and domed in nature. Basal forms such as Tapino caninus were already large animals, weighing up to 900 kilograms or 2,000 pounds, although still possessed differentiated teeth unlike later members of the family. Other genera, such as the South African Rebeccasaurus, were very long-snouted and would have somewhat resembled hippos in appearance. The most famous members of Tapinocephalidae, however, were even sillier looking, such as the rotund Moschops. With a small rounded skull perched atop a wide barrel chested body, this genus lived in a semi arid environment and probably fed on tough, nutrient poor vegetation, such as cycad stems. Despite its lumbering appearance, Moschops did possess somewhat raised limbs and flexible elbow joints enabling these animals to generate brief bursts of speed in order to escape from predators. Adults would have engaged in headbutting behaviour, perhaps to establish territories or to compete for mates. A similar genus, Ulemosaurus, was present in Russia at about the same time. The most massive member of the family was Tapinocephalus, which measured over 3 metres or 10 feet long and weighed up to 2 tonnes or 4,400 pounds. Like its close relatives, this was a heavily built and stocky herbivore with a thickened domed skull used in intraspecific competition. These slow moving animals would have been prime targets for another family of dinocephalians, the Titanosuchids. Recent phylogenetic studies have concluded that these carnivorous and omnivorous forms were the sister group of the aforementioned Tapinocephalids 
with both developing from more generalised ancestors. Like their close relatives, Titanosuchids possess thickened skulls, but also retain differentiated teeth, including powerful incisors and canines for grappling with prey. Although up to eight genera have been described, only two are known from relatively decent material, both of which were native to South Africa. The type species, Titanosuchus, was a 2.5 meter ambush predator, while the massive Joncaria was a somewhat bear-like omnivore. Average-sized individuals appear to have been about 3.5 meters long, but there have been suggestions that these may have been juveniles, with large adults potentially reaching 5 to 6 meters, being comparable to the Pleistocene bear Arctotherium in terms of size. Clearly a successful animal, up to eight species have been described that lived between 265 and 260 million years ago. However, despite this, John Carrier and all other dinocephalians would vanish from the fossil record at the end of this temporal range, being the victims of yet another harsh extinction event caused by runaway volcanism and climatic changes. This would lead to the replacement of herbivorous forms such as moss chops with the beaked dicynodonts, while the demise of the Antiosaurids and Titanosuchids allowed the more derived Thoracophalians and Gorgonopsids to take over the large carnivore niches. The Permian really was a uniquely harsh period for life on Earth, with three serious extinction events taking place within a 47 million year span, which is a real testament to the persistence and adaptability of our extinct synapsid relatives. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the South American Sporacidont Metatherians, so until then I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.